everybody, this is Saber Rex coming to you live with another video review for her The Beasts of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian series action figures by Creative Beast Studio and David Silva. And today we are going to be reviewing the last of the Wave 1 figures for the Ceratopsian series, the sub-adult Triceratops Horridus. So here we are. There it is, and before we take a look at this figure, let's take a quick look at the packaging for it, shall we? So, placing the figure back a little bit. So here we have the packaging for Triceratops Horridus, and it has been beautifully done. The sub-adult figure um, the illustration for that has been done by Raul Ramos. Um, as I've said before, um, her multiple artists contributed to the Ceratopsian line in regards to the artwork for the packaging. And, yeah, Raul Ramos did the sub-adult Triceratops. Um, the adult Triceratops packaging art uh, was done by R.J. Palmer, and when the Wave 3 figures come out, I will review that in depth. But flipping around to the back, you get this nice bit of information here on Triceratops. And, of course, you also get all the figures on here <laughs> for Wave 1. So going inside the box, in addition, you also get this diorama on the inside, which you can take out and place behind the figure, which is always fun. And, more than that, you also get this very cool little card, which of course has the information on the back regarding Triceratops. And finally, the ever important set of instructions which you need to properly um, attach the tail to the figure. Because the tail, um, yeah, it requires that you use a hairdryer or hot wire, I mean, hot water, uh, to properly install it. Otherwise, it's going to will lead to you bruising your hands, or breaking the figure her at the ball joint in the tail, and just a whole bunch of unpleasant stuff that you really don't need to deal with. So, read the instructions, and, and don't get yourself frustrated. Uh, you'll save yourself a lot of trouble, and you'll end up with a very cool looking figure as a result. So, moving on, let's get into the figure itself. So here we have the sub-adult Triceratops Horridus, and I have to say, out of all the Ceratopsians, out of all the figures for the lineup, this is without a doubt my absolute favorite of the Wave 1 figures. And it's also going to be my favorite um, figure in general because Triceratops is, of course, my favorite Ceratopsian. It's number one on my list at all times. So, yeah. Yeah, very, very happy about getting this figure. And the coloration for both the adult and sub-adult here is based off a Australian monitor lizard called a lace monitor. It's one of the most fearsome lizards in Australia, just because it's such a voracious predator, and it is capable of adapting to a lot of different environments in Australia. But the lace monitor coloration really, really works well for Triceratops. I mean, it looks so realistic, I can't really imagine it uh, any other way. Not even Saurian, um, the video game where you can actually play as a Triceratops, um, looks as realistic as this. I mean, yeah, it's just incredible. So. Taking a better look at that, right, you can see all that detail. I mean, look at that. Look at that color scheme. Look at the black. Look at the blue. Look at the yellow and how it fades into the white of the underbelly. It's just an incredible, incredible figure. 
I also noticed that on my particular Triceratops hor horridus, um, the right horn is actually a little shorter and a little uh, deformed compared to the other one. Now, I don't mind this at all. I, I contribute... I like to imagine this is a Triceratops who kind of broke off the tip of his horn and it, horn and it rehealed. And there are fossils that show this, um, which I will speak about later. But um, yeah, uh, he's got a little bit of a wonky horn, which kind of makes it hit all the cooler for me because all, all that much cooler for me because um, yeah, there's a lot of individual variation in Ceratopsians, including Triceratops. There are some with broken horns, damaged frills, uh, frills that are slightly malformed, and it just gives it a life of its own that otherwise it would not have. And I just think it's amazing. Now, articulation-wise, as one of the larger of the Wave 1 Ceratopsians, he has 20 points of articulation. And, yeah, his jaws can open about this much. Um, so he's got a nice wide gape. Inside the mouth, he does have a posable tongue, but I'm not going to really toy with that very much. Uh, just because his tongue is much smaller and deeper in the mouth than um, something like the Styracosaurus and the Medusa Ceratops. His neck can move, move this far, or, or to the right, same amount to the left, like so. And he's got some beautiful articulation in that neck. He can also move his head down about this much, so you can make it look like he's grazing. And that's actually about how Triceratops would actually hold its head in reality. They held their head at about 45 degree angles to better show off their horns and frills and simultaneously graze. Um, but he can also move his head up about that much. Not the best upward movement, but it's good enough to, say, show off how magnificent he is or to gore a T-Rex in the belly. <laughs> and no, oh, and uh, moving on to the arms, of course, he can move his arms a full 360, like so, though I don't recommend a full 360 because of these shoulder pieces here. His elbow can move about this far forward, can straighten out about this much. The wrists on both feet can also straighten about this much. The elbow can splay out like with all, well the shoulder can splay out with all these figures. He can twist and turn. Turn. Same with the wrist, so you get a nice bit of action in that. And in the hind leg, he can also do a full 360, but it's extremely difficult because of how much clearance issues there are in the hind leg due to how wide this figure actually is. He can bend his knee back about this much, right about to there. He can straighten his leg about that far forward. The ankle bend, bends about this far or forward and this far back. And the foot also bends very nicely. And you do get a lot of ankle tilt um, proportionate to the other ceratopsians for this figure. Now he can also move his torso about this far to the left. He's got very, very, he's very, very thick. So uh, as a result, he does not have all that much movement and for left and right in his torso. But he can also move his torso down about this much. And yeah, it, it's, it's very hey, tough to move him just because as his joints are tight. But he can also move his torso up about that much, as you can see. Yeah, so he's got a fair degree of motion. And of course, on the tail, he can move it left, right, up, down. Yeah, pretty much all those good directions like right there. <laughs> so, very, very cool figure. And yeah, I absolutely love Triceratops. This is one of my favorites. 
this is one of the coolest Ceratopsians out there. I mean, people take it for granted because it is one of the best known dinosaurs out there due to um, films like Jurassic Park and Walking with Dinosaurs. Uh, it does make a cameo appearance as a carcass in that documentary. Um, it also is in When Dinosaurs Roamed America, and um, quite a bit of other her documentaries as well. But yeah, it is one of the best known dinosaurs out there. And we actually know a lot more about Triceratops than pretty much any other horned dinosaur. Um, with the exception of a few other genre, like Styracosaurus and um, Pachyrhinosaurus. But, yeah, it, it's one of the best-known ceratopsians out there. We know that they cared for their young, and the young actually had a very different appearance than the adults did. The adults kind of look like this figure here, but had the young actually had upward-curving horns, and much shorter faces that made them look a lot cuter than the adults. And the fact that they looked cute as babies, especially when they were very little and their horns were nubs, um, that's an indication that Triceratops cared for its young. And new discoveries by paleontologists like Denver Fowler suggest that Triceratops did not live in very large herds. It actually lived in groups according to their uh, t according to their research uh, in groups of like three or not three to five um, I'm sorry um, five to ten individuals also so not very large groups but still large enough to repel oh, and attacks by still large enough to repel attacks by Tyrannosaurus Rex or perhaps a um, yeah, Dakota Raptor, uh, should they decide to go after a Triceratops. And Triceratops is one of the most common dinosaurs out there uh, in regards to fossils you may find. Um, because the heads of these dinosaurs fossilize so well, you can find and pieces of frill and um, teeth and beak and other parts of the skull more often than not. Uh, in the badlands of, South, De of uh, South Dakota and Montana and other places out in the western in the western states, yeah, there are also true there are also two species of Triceratops: Triceratops horridus, which is the only one in the toy line for the beasts of the Mesozoic, and the much larger um, and somewhat earlier uh, Triceratops prorsus. Uh, Triceratops prorsus is not as well known as Triceratops horridus, but we do know a lot about it as well. Um, but we're still trying to learn a lot about that particular species. Now, in regards to Triceratops, um, one other thing that's fascinating about it is the fact that, of course, it lived alongside T. rex. And there are individuals that have been found with bite marks on them that have healed from fighting with Tyrannosaurus rex. Uh, for example, the species Triceratops prorsus, there was an individual that had a horn broken off, um, I believe its left horn, and part of its frill chewed on by a Tyrannosaurus rex, and it managed to escape the predator. Which just goes to show you how dangerous Triceratops could be. Um, Probably yeah, the only way it would have escaped the T-Rex was by killing it. So, yeah, this is not an animal you would want to mess with, even if you're a T-Rex, unless you had very good cause to do so. But, yeah. And the other cool thing about uh, this particular figure for Triceratops is that when the Tyrannosaur line is going to be released um, this year... Um, for, on Kickstarter, we will also get a 135th scale Tyrannosaurus Rex that will be to scale with this sub-adult Triceratops figure. You can actually have this sub-adult Triceratops be substituted uh, for the um, adult Triceratops if you can't afford it uh, when 
and you get the Kickstarter exclusive 135th scale Tyrannosaurus Rex. So they will actually be to scale. Um, and it'll save you a bunch, it'll save you quite a bit of money and it won't take a chunk out of your wallets if you cannot afford it. So very, very cool in that regard that they will scale, they will have a scaled down T-Rex um, to pair with the sub-adult Triceratops so you can have it be a much smaller version of the adult. And the adult's going to be huge. Um, I have not... Uh, um, I've been lucky enough to see the original prototype. Um, I did not get to see it when it was painted, but um, that really doesn't matter. But when I saw the original prototype of the adult Triceratops, it was enormous. It's going to be about 18 inches long, so make sure you've got room for that. And if you get both of these Triceratops figures, make sure you display them together because, yeah, it, it's just going to show you how immense Triceratops sub-adults are. Well, sub-adults... Well, it's... Ugh, I can't talk today. It's going to show you just how immense the adult Triceratops is compared to these sub-adult. And when I get that figure, I will do a comparison for that. Now, price-wise, this Triceratops was about, I would say, 40, um, I would say $48. Here's maybe $50 uh, on the original backer kit. It is about that same price now. Oh, and definitely worth getting. I, I would say, without a doubt, Triceratops is one of the all-time all-star favorite dinosaurs out there. So, if you get the chance, get this figure. Lengthwise, let's measure this, this bad boy up. Lengthwise, this Triceratops figure measures approximately... I would say 11 inches, if you include the horn tips. If you measure him like that. Height-wise, to the top of his frill, he is exactly five inches. Just a very, very cool figure. <laughs> yeah, and he's nice. He's and he's nicely sized. I mean, yeah, absolutely one of the. Yeah, just a very nicely sized figure, and if if you got if you had something like uh, one of the beasts of the Mesozoic um, builder raptor sets, you could actually. Uh, construct a Dakota Raptor uh, to go oh, next to this, and it would be to scale with the subadult Triceratops because Dakota Raptor is a very large animal. Uh, it would have been measured about, how oh, um, yeah, it would have measured about oh, 18 feet long. But yeah, a full grown Triceratops measures about 30 feet. Yeah. So if you were to get the adult and then put the uh, Builder Raptor, Dakota Raptor, if you decide to create one alongside that, you'd have a pretty good scale. Oh, and it would, yeah, again, this is just one of those figures that's absolutely fantastic and definitely worth getting. <laughs> and I can't wait to show, show you the rest of the Wave 2 figures when they come out in April. So until then, this is Saberex signing off saying, you're never too old, old to play with toys, Hey, be a toy nerd, be proud of it, thank you, and have a good day. And before I leave, I just want had to tell you that this will not be the last video that I make for that regard, uh, in regards to dinosaurs. I have been thinking about making hang another video, possibly a regarding hang, hang a fight between Hegonotosaurus and Tyrannosaurus Rex. So, if you want to see that, please leave a like, hit subscribe, or leave a comment, and because I'd really like to know what you think of that. Thank you, and have a good day. Bye.